If you or someone you know has been told they need heart surgery, we want you all to know that you're not in this alone. At Oklahoma Heart Hospital, you have over 70 cardiovascular specialists and nurses with many years of experience in cardiac care on your team. Since opening our doors in 2002, we have helped patients across the United States through their cardiac journey get back to the lifestyle they desire. We've created this video to share some very helpful tips on how to prepare for an open heart surgery and the recovery process. So how should we get started? Let's start in the kitchen. We all need food and you may need to go to the grocery store so you have what you need after your surgery. You're not going to feel like cooking, so having some easy snacks and meals on hand can be very helpful. You will not be able to drive until your follow-up appointment, which may be 7 to 14 days after being discharged from Oklahoma Heart Hospital. So stock up while you can. Exactly. Preparing the outside of your house is just as important as preparing the inside. For example, look for things such as water hoses, uneven ground, and newspapers. Having clear walking paths will be very helpful. Make sure you have enough space to walk. Removing potted plants or chairs on the porch could make all the difference. A trip and fall is not going to make anything better. The goal is to make it easy for yourself to get around after surgery. You will need to walk as part of your recovery. You can choose if that's inside or outside, or Mother Nature may decide it for you. If your home has stairs, you can use them, but be sure to take it slow and don't do anything to hurt yourself. If your bed is upstairs, you may want to consider finding an alternative sleeping area downstairs. You may also want to get a nightlight to help light your path or to remind yourself that you are downstairs. Keep in mind that after surgery, you're not supposed to lift more than five pounds. Is there anything you can move today that would be too heavy after surgery? Ask someone you know for help ahead of time. If you have a pet at home, believe it or not, Little Rover is not going to help you. The night before your open heart surgery, you and your bed need to be as clean as possible. That means it's time to wash your bed sheets, pillows, pillowcases, and blankets. If you use a CPAP machine or any other devices while sleeping, make sure they are all sanitized. Now that your bedding and accessories are cleaned and sanitized, it's your turn. Get a clean washcloth and take a shower, not a bath. If you don't have a shower, you may want to get a shower chair for your bathtub. You may also want to consider getting a shower wand for your bathtub. It could be easier than using one cup of water at a time. When you shower, use the germ-killing CHG soap that you were given. If you did not get the CHG soap from us or if you lost it, don't panic. There are other germ-killing soaps such as Dial that can typically be found at your local neighborhood stores and pharmacies. Start with washing your hair first and then the rest of your body. And don't forget to scrub underneath your fingernails. After your shower, be sure to dry off with a clean towel and put on clean pajamas. If you have pets, you need to distance yourself from them as much as possible. We all love our pets, but they can't sleep with you tonight. We understand that sleeping might be hard, and we get that everyone's a little stressed prior to surgery. Do your best to sleep as well as you can before you come in. You can rest assured that at Oklahoma Heart Hospital, you are in good hands. When you wake up on the day of your surgery, you're going to repeat what you did before you went to bed all over again. That's right. We need you to have a clean place to sleep when you return from surgery. Change your sheets, pillowcases, and blankets one more time with freshly washed and dried ones. And make sure any device you use while sleeping, like a CPAP or sleeping mask, are sanitized as well. After you have that completed, what's next? Well, you were clean when you went to sleep, but you are not now. Grab a new washcloth and take a shower with the CHD soap. Dry off with a new towel, not the one that you used the night before. On the day of your surgery, leave all your jewelry like rings and piercings at home. You will not be able to wear any of it in surgery. You won't need to bring any extra money, food, pillows, or blankets. Smoke breaks are not permitted. Talk to your doctor about needing nicotine gum or patches during your stay. We may be able to provide you with anti-anxiety medications instead. Leave all your pills and medications at home. Only bring a list of current medications that you are taking. Our nurses will provide you with the medications you take during your stay with us. Aside from the list of medications, all you need to bring with you are clean undergarments, a set of clothes, and loose fitting shoes or house slippers with a firm sole for your ride back home after surgery. So make sure your favorite pajamas are clean. 
and be sure not to wear your skinny jeans. Wear something comfortable and loose for your ride to Oklahoma Heart Hospital. The more elastic your clothes are, the better. After your open heart surgery, you're gonna wake up with a catheter and tubes. You will probably have a tube in your throat and won't be able to speak for a little while. Don't be alarmed by any of this as it's all a part of the open heart surgery. You can use a pen and paper to let us know anything you need. Visitors can come in the room at that time if you wish. A couple of really important things to help with your recovery will be remembering to breathe and cough. You may think breathing is a no-brainer and you're doing that right now, but once you've had surgery, you'll be sore and won't want to take deep breaths. Really the key piece of your recovery is understanding how to take deep breaths. We have a little piece of equipment that you're going to be working with. Let me introduce you to the incentive spirometer. Everybody thinks they take this and blow. That is not how this works. It's breathing in and filling your lungs up with air all the way that helps to keep your lungs healthy after surgery. This also helps you to avoid catching pneumonia. To use the incentive spirometer, sit up and hold the device. Place the mouthpiece spirometer in your mouth. Make sure you have a good seal over the mouthpiece with your lips. Breathe out normally, breathe in slowly. A piece in the incentive spirometer will rise as you breathe in. Try to get this piece to rise as high as you can. Usually there is a marker placed by your doctor that tells you how big of a breath you should take. A smaller piece in the spirometer looks like a ball or disc. Your goal should be to make sure this ball stays in the middle of the chamber while you breathe in. If you breathe in too fast, the ball will shoot up to the top. If you breathe in too slowly, the ball will stay at the bottom. Hold your breath for three to five seconds. Then slowly exhale. Take 10 to 15 breaths with your spirometer every one to two hours or as often as instructed by your nurse or doctor. Now the other item we have to help you survive post-surgery is our heart recovery bear. He's gonna be your best friend. Be sure not to let your grandchildren or anyone else take your bear. You're gonna need him because he will keep you from hurting so bad when you cough. The key to your success is deep breathing and coughing once you're out of surgery and awake. Controlling your pain after surgery is a big part of your hospital stay and you play a vital role in that effort. Please keep your nurse informed of your pain levels. You can help them understand your pain level by rating it on a scale of zero to 10. If you tell your nurse your pain level is zero, they would understand that you have no pain. If you tell your nurse your pain level is 10, they would understand that you have excruciating pain. You need to know that a pain level of four is our goal. It's not realistic to think that you will not have any discomforting pain after surgery. We don't want your pain to get out of control and would really like to treat it sooner rather than later. Tell your nurse if your pain is not relieved and be open to trying other methods such as positioning for comfort. Please don't worry about becoming addicted to your pain medications. Being comfortable is another important part of a successful recovery process. And don't forget, don't leave a bear on a bear chest. You thought you were coming to the hospital for a little vacation, but that's not happening. We're gonna get you up and get you moving. First, we'll give you a pair of our socks that have special grippers on them. They'll help prevent slips and falls. We get some patients walking as quickly as the evening of their surgery and some as early as the next morning. Don't worry, we'll pace it. But doing more each day is very important. You'll always have someone with you and you'll always be monitored. Your participation is an important part of your recovery. A really easy thing that your visitors and caregivers can do to keep you safe is to sanitize their hands often when they're around you. Everyone wants to make sure you're okay and they want you to get well. You need your rest. You don't need to entertain everybody. It's all about focusing on you and getting you better and stronger each day. And you can't do that if you're entertaining everyone all day long. So let your nurses help you control the crowds. Preceding your discharge, our cardiac rehab staff will go over goals of a successful recovery. In some cases, Medicare will cover a number of days of our cardiac rehab program for you if you sign up. Using Medicare or not, we are confident you won't regret what you are going to learn in our cardiac rehab program. Have a plan to get your prescriptions filled immediately. Be sure to take your medications correctly. If you have questions or concerns, give us a call. After your discharge, you need to have someone drive you home. 
For the first couple of weeks until your follow-up appointment, your activities will be limited to walking. We know you know it, but we have to remind you to not be around any type of smoking or vaping during your recovery. And don't forget, you shouldn't lift anything over five pounds. So don't go around lifting heavy cooking skillets or gallons of milk. Most pets are at least five pounds. Don't pick them up and don't let them lounge on you until your incision sites have healed properly. Holding your grandkids or newborns is going to have to wait as well. Having just had open heart surgery, you'll need to protect your sternum. You might be capable of loading your washing machine one piece of clothing at a time, but getting them into the dryer is off limits. Wet clothes can be heavy and can also increase your fall risks when you bend down. As you can see, you're not going to do a whole lot after surgery. So plan and create a comfortable environment for your recovery. Take a shower every single day to help prevent infections. Remember, only showers, not baths. We don't want you to soak your incisions. At first, you may need help showering and getting around. If you think having a handy pull bar in your bathtub or next to your toileting area is a good idea for you, get it installed before your surgery. In the meantime, be sure to keep using the CHG soap until your incision areas have properly healed. Keep the information we gave you close by. It can be a great resource. During your recovery, try to enjoy the little things that are around you. Setting goals to do more and more each day is vital to your recovery. Opening your windows and letting the sunshine in could be your first goal. Keep it simple and increase your activity gradually each day. We hope you enjoyed watching and now understand how to prepare for open heart surgery and the recovery process. If you have any questions or concerns that we have not covered, contact your doctor's office. We look forward to serving you and your family.